Hey everyone, it's Katie M. Reed from KDMReed.com and it is Monday and this is your Monday message. Hi Valerie, how are you? I'll give you guys a minute to join on in. Do you have a cup of coffee or tea? I haven't gotten mine yet, but hope to soon. Um, I'm going to be announcing the winners of the War Room movie giveaway and also the Dance with Jesus giveaway at the end of this message. So, um, glad you guys are here and let's get started. Do you fear you are too much for others? I don't know about you, but that's often something I fear. I feel like I have too much passion or I have too many problems. I'm just too much. And so a lot of times I'll um, hold back from relationships because I just am afraid I'm too much and that I'm going to be too needy or too selfish or too discouraging or too overwhelming. And so a lot of times I think we can hide our true selves because we fear that we're just too much. There's a, um, an account in Luke 2 verses 43 through 48 that I want to read to you. And it says, and, as, and a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up to him came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. And Jesus said, Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the multitudes are crowding and pressing upon you. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that power had gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And I just was thinking about this woman. I mean, I'm sure that she felt like she was too much for other people. She had had this issue for 12 years. Have you ever or someone you know ever had an issue that it's just not going away and it can be exhausting to you and to other people. But you know what? She took a risk with her too much and she touched the hem of his garment. I love it. Just the outer bit of his garment and she was healed and he said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Often when we have our too much, don't we need peace? We're just, we're afraid or we're fearful and we just, we want that peace. Um, I'm reading the book, Finding Spiritual White Space by Bonnie Gray. I'm going to show it to you here. It's a very good book and I want to read you just an excerpt from it that goes along with this idea of being too much. And this is in the chapter called The Phone Call on page 135. And she said, Maybe there hasn't been any safety in relationships apart from you being competent. You don't know people will accept you or reject you if they know you are broken. Now the stress has you weary. You're no longer sure of who you're becoming in the new world God's having you enter. You may feel competent or in control right now, but something more beautiful is making its way to you, God's story taking shape in you. And then on the next page, on page 136, she was talking about her friend named Amy. And she said, Amy isn't trying to fix me. She's my friend. We tell each other we're tired without feeling like there's something wrong. The white space of friendship, it doesn't fix us. It frees us to rest. And I know when you feel like you're too much, it's hard to admit um, problems to other people because you're afraid you're going to get rejected. When I was in college, um, I, my soon-to-be husband and I were struggling um, physically. And I remember just, um, I felt like I had to confess it to a friend or we would just continue down that road. So I blurted out what we had been doing and it was super embarrassing. I definitely felt like it was too much information, you know, but I just knew and I was so tired of the sin and I knew I needed to be well. And so good morning, Cindy. Good morning, hubby. Anyway, I just, I knew I needed to be well. And so I took the risk and I'm sure this woman in Luke 8 was the same thing. She was so tired of her issue. She just wanted to be well. She wanted that peace. Um, and so anyway, so I told this friend this issue and later on she told me, she's like, I didn't know how to, um, Oh, hi, is Renee here? Hi, Renee. Um, I didn't um, want to tell, or she said she didn't know what to do with that information. So then I was super embarrassed. I mean, she told me this later on. But you know what? About a year ago, this same friend um, 
confess something to me that was super hard. And I don't think she would have done that had I not been vulnerable earlier on. And so I think we can model for each other as we come to each other with our brokenness and our too much. Now, I'm not saying you should just broadcast your too much to everyone. You need to know that you can trust a friend, but sometimes it takes that risk because you don't know how they're going to react to your too much. But I just want to tell you that you can take your too much to God for sure. You can take it and put it on his shoulders because it's not too much for him. He's strong enough to carry your too much. And I believe that he can provide some other friends for you to help you carry your too much as well. Um, I know that, um, you know, sometimes we need to risk that momentary embarrassment for that chance at lasting freedom. Um, I had a friend who, strong Christian woman, hi Jolene, how are you? And she um, had gone overseas to serve the Lord and through years and years of some like brainwashing and that kind of thing, it ended up being a cult and she felt so deceived and she was so embarrassed because she went over there to serve the Lord and through series of events, it became a cult and something that was not honoring the Lord. And so she, I remember we hadn't known each other very long, but she, she vomited that up on me. And I know what she was doing. She wanted to say to me, Katie, is my issues too much for our friendship? Because she just wanted to get it out of the way. She just wanted to know, can I, um, can I trust you with my too much? And I could, but you know what? She got burned a lot and she realized, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that, you know, in the first one minute of meeting someone, hey, I was in a cult, <laughs> but she learned that she could trust certain people with it and that there's sometimes that she didn't need to say it, but um, we had a great friendship and, you know, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, she was in a cult, like, you know, it was a little crazy, but you know what? She trusted me with her heart and then I felt free to be able to trust her with my issues, so I'm praying for you right now this morning, friend, that you have one or two or even three friends that you can trust with your too much. And even if you are, you have not, God has not brought those friends to light, you can trust him with your too much. And you know, um, let's see what Jolene has to say. Been hearing from several lately that they've been told they're too much. Oh, that is so hard because when you take that risk, it is embarrassing. When you say, I've been struggling with this sin, I'm still struggling with this issue. It can be super embarrassing. You know, I had a dear friend who I felt like I was telling her too much and it was too much for her. And that was so hard because then you feel like there's just something wrong with you that you're not accepted. But let's take our too much at his feet today. Dear Lord, thank you that our too much is not too much for you. Thank you that you are enough for us. May you provide each of these listeners with a couple friends that they can trust their too much to because it's worth the risk. We don't want to just be bleeding, our hearts bleeding for 12 years like this woman in Luke. May we touch the hem of your garment today and take the risk to give you our too much. And may we be healed in faith and go in peace. Well, I thank you for listening today. Um, you are not too much. You are wonderful. Your passions and your problems are not too much for the King of Kings. Now, before we finish, I am so excited to announce the winners of the War Room Movie Swag this morning. It is Erica J. from Texas. Congratulations. I'll be emailing you and sending you your War Room Movie Swag. Give some hearts if you went to go see War Room. It is such a good movie. If you have not seen it, please go see it. You will be changed. It will light a fire in you. There's a grandma in there that knows how to pray. And I want to pray like her and live out that faith. Um, she poured her too much onto Jesus in his throne room. And you guys should go see War Room. I had the privilege of interviewing Alina Pitts, who plays Priscilla Schreier's daughter in the movie, and I'll share that link again on Twitter. And then I also wanted to announce the winners from the Dance with Jesus giveaway. My friend Susan B. Mead wrote Dance with Jesus, and she graciously signed two copies and is giving them away to two readers. The winners of those are Jeanette Pierce, 
congratulations. And also Debbie S., congratulations. Um, I've sent an email to you guys, and I know you'll just enjoy that book as Susan shares her too much story so that you can find freedom. Well, that's all today for the Monday message. Um, be back here Wednesday as Hubby and I do our stop. Hammock time, oh yes, awesome, Renee. I want to see it again, too. You know what? My kids are begging to see it. And so we might have to shell out some cash. Our movie theater is not cheap, but you know what? It is worth it. Um, but anyway, on Wednesday, Hubby and I will be here for Stop Hammock Time. And then on Friday, I do We Write, where we talk about writing tips. Thanks for joining me this morning on Periscope. Have a fabulous week. Talk to you later.